Have you ever asked somebody a question or tried to relay them a message and just by the way that they responded told you that uh, they certainly didn't get the message, they didn't really understand your point uh, by their response or by their lack of response or lack of interest. You could tell that what you were trying to say wasn't really hitting home and it's all because of this word perspectives again and uh, I remember a long time ago in Bible college they were talking about how all the same scientific facts people can look at. One person looks at all the facts and all the scientific data and says that's total proof that there is a God. And then there's another person who says, oh, that's total proof that there is no God, all because of the way that they see things and all the way that they're able to process and their understanding. That so they understand it totally different because of perspectives all overall. And I remember like in the garden, Genesis chapter 3, where the serpent is coming to Eve and what have you, and, and asking questions and saying things that's all verbally true, but the meaning and understanding was totally a trick to say that you will not die, you know, assuming that you're not going to die physically, but didn't let her know, oh, by the way, you're going to die spiritually, and you're going to know like God, uh, you're going to have knowledge like God, and seeing both good and evil, and all that was true, but it was under a false pretense in order to get her to spiritually die. Um, it, there was truth to it, and in fact, when the Trinity's talking to himself, you know, discussing among themselves, however you want to say it, he said, he said the exact same words as Satan did, but it was perspective-wise, and it ended up being a trick. Right words, wrong meaning, and it was the wrong perspective. Um, but today, I wanted to take a look about, take a look at, you know, because of how much suffering has been going on in this world, anyhow, all over the world, and because of this global nightmare that's happening to this whole world, it can be a little bit rough on a lot of people. Some people, they don't feel it like I hadn't before. At the first, I didn't feel it that much. It was actually better for me. I just felt bad for everybody else, so it wasn't good for me because I knew everybody else was suffering. But a lot of this hasn't affected me that bad. But a lot of people it has, and the sufferings that has happened has caused a lot of, you know, open doors to all kinds of terrible things. It has caused a lot of pain, and a lot of sorrow, and even loss of life. But uh, the right view on sufferings, um, God's view on sufferings, is kind of what I wanted to look at. Because when we're suffering as Christians, there's three things that they they can be, very well be. Maybe even four, but let's go with the three, the main three. <laughs> you know, when, when Jonah was suffering, he was in the belly of a whale. That was a big time chastisement, you know. But uh, a lot of times the bad things happen. You know, there's a testing that happened to Job. He was perfect and he was being perfected even further for testing purposes. And then there's other times for chastisement, like uh, the minister of Satan or the thorn in the flesh that uh, Apostle Paul had to endure. And he asked three times to have that removed. And God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. You need to have this so it'll keep you humble. The chastisement is there to keep you humble or keep you from going off track or to straighten you out one way or another. But a lot of times if you get raised up without any chastisement, you're going to fall into the condemnation of the devil, the Bible says. That's why it says, not a novice, don't raise them up too fast, because their pride will dominate their soul. But the Bible also says that we are not given temptation more than we can handle. So all three different versions of suffering, and the third one being an attack of the enemy, by the way. Um, so we have the testing for the righteous, we have chastisement for those who are making mistakes, going off track, or we also have it's an attack of the enemy because he he is trying to stop you from getting to your next stage in God and true state and faith in God as you're coming back to your first love and your first works of the Lord. So God does not give us more than we can handle, though. If, if he's allowing us to go through it, there's a reason why it's okay. That means we can have peace to know that all these sufferings can be an okay thing for us overall. So let's take a look what the Bible says here. In, um, and it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It's verse 7. It says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, which we are, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body and the dying of the Lord Jesus. 
that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us but life in you. Uh, very, very powerful. And down to verse 16, For which cause we faint not. For though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Amen. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are un that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, and the things which are not seen are eternal. See, we don't have to worry about the things that are happening in this life sometimes for that even that reason. We don't want to be consumed with the here and the now. It's like, yeah, we're we're being tossed to and fro, but not too much. God allows us to handle so much, and it's for our betterment. All three of these sufferings of Christians is all for our betterment. And we can see that when we look at things from God's perspective, the right perspectives of sufferings. And the right perspectives of sufferings, like I said, is in regards to the three overall attack for different types of sufferings that we have to suffer through and that is um, the testing and the chastisement and also an attack of the enemy so if that's all it really is if we really have God's perspective on this so we don't have to feel bad about it we see God's perspective and even the bad can feel good because this is the only temporal this is seen and not unseen and we're supposed to be like in Romans uh, chapter 8 verse 14 it says that we are saved by grace through hope we're saved by grace through hope and not a visible hope if you if you can see it then why would you yet hope for it it's an invisible hope we're thinking about the invisible realm which is more important christians are supposed to keep their mind on that which is more important we have to keep the right godly perspective of the heavenly view of our sufferings is it a test of god then let's pass the test is it a chastisement let's endure the chastisement is it an attack of the enemy let's endure the attack of the enemy and return fire against the, the enemy and give back what he has given to us best way we can do that is to come back to our first love come back to our first love and come back to the first works come back to god the way he called us to originally straighten out our crooked paths it's time to seek the lord uproot from the filth and uproot from the bad company that corrupts good morals and get back to where the lord has called us in the first place all the distractions do away with them put away the nonsense put away the arm of the flesh the lord is saying Yes, you've been struck down, but you're not destroyed. Everything's going to be all right. These sufferings, all three for the Christians, is for our betterment, to get us back on the track, to give us a chance to go to a higher place, to test us for a greater testimony, to be a greater influence for our Lord and Savior, the awesome Jesus Christ. Amen.